talked about the spiritual dynamic. Now let's talk about lay mobilization, which we've said is going to be the path to church multiplication. Now, this is something we've talked about, so just very briefly, if we're talking about a church that has cell groups, small groups, we've sort of advocated this as one of the most helpful and effective forms of church life. If you have these small groups, uh, hopefully you're reproducing those small groups in the church. Now, of course, you're going to have to have new leaders to reproduce those cells. Who's going to lead these new cell groups? Can't always be the same people. Uh, and so usually we say every group, every small group should have an apprentice leader or a co-leader in that small group who then, as that group multiplies, that apprentice leader can go with the new group. So that's one of the things that's going to be important. But ultimately then, if we want to reproduce churches, as we've said, very often uh, a couple of those home groups become then a core for a new group and then leaders go with them. So the idea of reproducing churches by reproducing cells, as we've said all along, is going to be a key, but you've got to have the leaders to do that. So I want to talk about different levels of lay mobilization. What I mean by that is there are different people in the church are at different stages of their Christian life. And we have to have various approaches to helping people where they're at in their life as serving Christ that are different for the different levels. Again, one of the problems with some church structures, more traditional church structures, is sort of a, a one-size-fits-all approach. In other words, we're just going to have one sort of educational program and everybody just comes to that. And, um, or one training program, everybody comes to that. And we've not realized that people are in different places in their spiritual lives and in their their responsibilities and so on, and they need different approaches. So let me show you just sort of an idea of the way to look at this. We might look at what all believers need, or especially young people, uh, or new believers, what everyone needs. And we could just call this establishing people in their faith, establishing people in discipleship. We want every believer to be walking with Christ, growing in their, their relationship with him, serving him in different ways. This is just sort of general what everyone needs. And so there are certain general church ministries that will help address that need, whether it's the worship services, whether it's preaching and teaching, uh, whether it's counseling and so on. It's something that everyone needs. But then we want to see those people who are becoming more and more committed to Christ and more and more committed to the life of the church to become workers. They become members. They become committed to that body and they become servants, or I'm calling them workers in the church. And so they start serving in different ways, whether it's helping with worship, whether it's helping with children's ministry, whether it's working in the community with a, a soup kitchen or an orphanage. They're beginning to discover that they can serve others. They're not just recipients of ministry. That may be fewer people. Um, now, what do they need? They need to discover and develop their gifts and some basic ministry skills. And so sometimes having a workshop that helps people understand how to understand the Bible, to interpret the Bible, for example. Um, it may be, depending on their ministry, you may have a, a training session for children's workers. And so depending on what those ministries are, you help people discover their gifts, you help them begin to get those basic skills they need to do well. We don't want to just sort of throw people into ministry without having prepared them. That's the best way to get somebody discouraged. Uh, they, they go and they try this. Maybe they're gifted, but they try this and then things don't go well and then they're discouraged and say, oh, I'm not gifted after all. Well, nobody sits down at the piano for the first time and is a concert pianist, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, no, you, you, you're you going to take some lessons. Now, that doesn't mean the person's not gifted because they couldn't play a concerto the first day they sat at the piano. No, they have the musical gift, but they got to develop it, right? So um, what very often happens, of course, is there's somebody says, I want to be a pianist. And uh, say, fine, so we'll have music lessons, you take piano lessons, and six months later, eh, this person just doesn't seem to be getting it. And you say, well, you know, that's just probably not their gift. Um, maybe something else. Maybe you ought to be a, a basketball player or something. Okay. Um, you know, you discover by kind of experimenting a little, don't you? 
I mean, how did you find out that you were good at something? You, you sort of tried it out and you found it, hey, I, I like this, I'm good at it, people affirm. So you may have that experimental level, but once you kind of discover people have these gifts, you help them to develop those gifts. You don't just push them in the swimming pool and say, now learn how to swim. No, you give them some lessons and so they develop. Well, then you've got people that are now moving into more of a leadership role. So you might have a group of people who are doing children's ministry. But then there's, of course, you're going to need some people who are leading that. Actually, they become people who are training other children ministry workers. And so you're looking for those key people who are particularly gifted, particularly faithful, teachable, who then become the responsible leaders for those ministry teams. Or like we were saying with the cell group ministry, you're looking in the cell groups and saying, who are the people that are gifted, who others trust, who seem to have a heart for this? You identify them who are going to be then group leaders. Now they need something a little, uh, a little different. They need strengthening of their ministry and basic leadership skills. So whereas the first, this level down here with members and workers, we're talking about just basic development of ministry, basic ministry skills. Here we're talking about strengthening those ministry skills because they're going to be teaching and guiding others. And we're talking about basic leadership skills. So in other words, it's not just learning about, well, this is how you do a good Sunday school lesson. That's sort of the skill part. But the leadership part also, and sometimes we miss that. In other words, how do you lead people? Because I could be the best Sunday school teacher in the world, but I'm not very good at leading people, right? <laughs> I've got to learn how to motivate people when they're discouraged. I've got to learn how to gently help people correct mistakes they're making. And so I need more of those leadership kinds of skills to help develop people. Now, as a leader in the church, if I'm going to help those people move into those leadership roles, I have to be looking at those kinds of abilities that need to be developed. And then sort of finally, we could talk about pastors, elders. Now these would be the people who have the most responsibility in the church. They're the spiritual leaders. They are the ones who set the spiritual tone of the church. They give the overall guidance to the church and the spiritual care and teaching. And they are going to need to develop advanced leadership, not just basic leadership skills, advanced leadership abilities, pastoral and equipping skills. These then really become the equippers of the others. Remember what we saw in Ephesians 4, that God gave some to be apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints. And so those leaders that are at the very highest level of responsibility, they should be the primary equippers of the people at these other levels. All right? And so one of the things that, uh, that the leaders are going to need to be looking at is, where are the, the people I'm working with at what level of this sort of development? Not everybody's going to be a team leader or a cell group leader. Most people will probably be workers. Very few will probably be elders or pastors. And these are the ones that are going to be a key to church multiplication because they are the ones that are going to be sent out when you plant a daughter church. And so we're talking about a development of people from the new believer to the worker to the leader and eventually to the pastor. And so as a leader, I'm going to be investing especially a lot of time in helping develop these people. This is what Jesus did. He was developing, especially towards the end of his ministry, more and more time with the 12 because they were going to be the key people to launch the movement. That doesn't mean the other people were unimportant, but it means there were going to be others who could care for those needs. So this is sort of a, a leadership pyramid, a development pyramid that you may want to be thinking about in your own church, what are we doing to help people at these different levels? What are we doing to help move a person who I see potential, move them to the next level of service and leadership? We invite you to participate in the International Bible Teaching and Gospel Sharing Project. Whether these Christian expanded educational opportunities will become available to people around the world, 
depends on all of us. We very much need and appreciate your prayer and financial support. For more information, please visit tvsseminary.com.